Hi everyone, and today I'm going to talk about uh, ester bond formation in hot spring environments and tidal pools. Well, um, actually, I'm going to start uh, the phrase uh, from Richard Feynman. This is my really favorite uh, phrase from Richard Feynman, and he said, "What I cannot create, I do not understand." And I want to use this phrase for origins of life studies. Uh, even if we create a life in our laboratories, can we be really sure that we figure out how did life appear on Earth? Can we really be sure that, okay, this is the origins of life, emergence of life? I think it's a uh, more complex uh, idea of, uh, beyond that. So in this, uh, in this direction, actually, we need to address the correct questions. And I want to uh, mention um, three dimension here. And firstly, actually, life has got a history. There are some events, very important events, contribute to the, uh, life's emergence. And the order of these events is also important. And uh, life it should be spontaneously and naturally formed. And this is very important part too. And also there should be similarities because we know of life as we know it. For example, let's assume that we found something interesting, something strange in, in on planet B. But how can we be sure that this is the life? Maybe there are some alternative chemistry that we don't know yet, but um, we can define life as we know it. So there should be similarities when we are addressing our questions. So by addressing our questions, actually, we are trying to build a bridge between non-living matter and living matter. So life is a complex phenomenon, as I mentioned, and there can be some um, alternative chemistries before uh, biology appeared. For example, um, there are a lot of periodic monomers were abundant, and um, maybe they contributed a lot to the emergence of life, and we don't see them uh, in the modern chem bio biochemistry. And I want to mention ester bond as an alternative chemistry to solve to solve our uh, problems. And also there is a repeating the history. Can we repeat the history to explain the emergence of life? Can we predict evolution and its consequences? This is a problem because um, even if we apply the same, even if we apply the same uh, conditions, can we be really sure that we will get the same process, the same life as we know it? It can be discussed. Uh, we can discuss, and there should uh, there should be some logical transition between biotic chemistry to biochemistry too. So we are looking for just a little and uh, uh, logical transition between them, and also we need to think about uh, possibilities that we uh, life can have. Oh, so I'm. Uh, trying to, uh, I will give a ester bond formation as which possible process explain best emergence of life. So in this direction, ester bond formation can be important. But why? Well, actually, we got proteins inside of our cells, and uh, these proteins, uh, without these proteins, we cannot live because. Uh, uh, for example, we, ha we have our, our enzymes and they can uh, carry out our metabolic reactions and they are proteins. But uh, proteins actually is consist of a polypeptide chain and polypeptide chain is basically uh, is a form of amino acids comes together with amid bond, amid bonds. But this actually is kind of problematic in uh, by the perspective of thermodynamics in aqueous solution, because it's actually when uh, you, you can see amid bond formation. Uh, so sorry, uh, you can see here amid bond formation mechanism, and it gives water as a product, and also uh, that's uh, um, and then when the, when that occurs, actually uh, the equilibrium uh, shifts towards the reactants, but it should be. Um, it should be shifting to the, to the products. So this is a problem. But how can uh, ester bond uh, help us in this uh, perspective? 
uh, we can see esters uh, in our uh, biochemistry. We can they can be uh, found as glycerol, for example, in our cell membrane. So they are, and they are also uh, very abundant in probiotic chemistry. Uh, and also they can form polyesters, which is very similar to polypeptide as a polymer. And um, but and also under same conditions, uh, in aqueous solution, ester bond for formations gives energy is uh, low compared to amide bond. So it's it can um, polymerize easily compared to amide bond. So maybe they can help um, and they can uh, it can help us uh, to solve this kind of uh, this amide bond formation before um, polypeptide um, appear. So actually alpha hydroxy acids can form ester bonds together and polymerize polyesters as, we, as I mentioned. And you can see here actually the alpha hydroxy acid and amino acid structure together and they are plausible and they are common and they can be found together in meteorite samples, in periodic settings, it's, it's, it has been shown. And also alpha hydroxy acids uh, they can polymerize polyesters under low temperature, wet dry cycles, through wet dry cycles and acidic conditions, which the, uh, we can see uh, this condition as a prebiotic setting. So this is very important. And um, if we compare polyesters and uh, polypeptides, well, actually polyesters can be stable under uh, to acidic and acidic conditions they can uh, polymerize uh, more efficiently uh, than uh, polypeptides and but yeah actually if we compare them for example uh, polypeptides can have can form intermolecular hydrogen bonds uh, so between them so maybe the, there was a, some story before um, before po uh, polypeptides formed uh, completely and uh, polyester polys um, polypeptides was got selected over polyesters because it has it got some selective advantages in the chemical evolution we cannot we cannot know that but there has been thoughts about it and also there is a very interesting uh, thought that uh, they can alpha hydroxy acids and amino acids together they can form depspeptide depspeptide is actually basically it's a structure consists of uh, amino acids and alpha hydroxys together. And it has been thought that in the beginning, actually, there was a depth peptide structures which has more ester, which has more ester bonds, and gradually it became more amino acids. So it led to, to the polypeptide chain occurred. So in this way, maybe we have we had a chance. Uh, maybe uh, life had a chance to form uh, the polypeptide. So my um, so there are a lot of uh, environments which can be seen as a suitable uh, for the emergence of life. Uh, for example, like oceans, maybe hydrothermal settings. But I wanna uh, suggest that tidal pools and hot spring environments can be also uh, seen as suitable environments. Why? As you can see, there's an image here. It shows the tidal pool scenario. And this, uh, actually, you can see that the tide, tide levels can change. When, uh, and it can change, and it can completely dry. When it dries, actually, we, we call it a, a wet dry cycle. It can allow the concentrations of organic molecules, which can be life's building blocks. And also, they can... Um, they can also allow some condensation and polymerization reactions. And in this way, maybe uh, we had a chance to receive some polymer formation. And um, <clears throat> there, as you can see, there are also the fluctuating environments. Uh, so that means that today to the, to the night, their pH and temperature can change. And, um, and, Another, another important thing is that uh, they got a mineral rich uh, floor. So this mineral rich floor can help uh, uh, chemical reactions, um, can help uh, to speed up some chemical reactions. Uh, for example, uh, it has been shown that uh, 
salt induced peptide formation um, can occur in this under these conditions of true wet dry cycles um, in 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 the presence of uh, sodium chloride. So they got a maybe uh, important roles. And also tidal pools are UV transparent. So we know that there are, there can there may be some photochemical reactions the dry um, may important um, uh, may play important roles in the emergence of life. So this is also important. So in this direction, actually, I want to uh, give my main idea that uh, ester bonds can form under pool-like conditions. So uh, actually, they can. Um, it has been shown that ester bond can form via oligoesters. Uh, yeah. Um, through wet dry cycles and uh, under uh, pool like conditions and also alpha hydroxy acid can be found in these settings and these uh, alpha hydroxy acids can oligomerize under acidic conditions too and um, also oligom oligomerization of peptide through ester mediated as uh, as i mentioned in um, in the previous slides uh, um, true ester mediated under acidic and evaporate environment oligomerization of peptide can be can uh, can occur and this is uh, the last uh, research study i want to mention the, the in this study actually they managed to uh, form some polymers which includes polyesters for, uh, by using these uh, alpha hydroxy acid samples and under these uh, pool like conditions so as a conclusion, I want to finish my um, uh, presentation. Emergence of life is a very complex process, and it may not be explained by a single geochemical setting. Polyester and Dipsy peptide may have played important roles as precursors in the periodic chemistry. Tidal pools and hot spring environments can be suitable environments for the emergence of life. And ester bond can be formed under pool-like environmental conditions. So I would like to thank you for this amazing uh, young scientist program to Blue Marble Space community. It was a very amazing uh, project uh, and summer for me. And many thanks to Tony, Kuhan, and Jim. They were uh, I learned uh, a lot of things from them. And thanks to thanks to my fellows in the project too. So thank you. Fantastic. Wonderful job, Chandler. We have some time for questions before our first major break. I see Sanjoy has his hand up immediately. Go ahead, Sanjoy. Chandler, thank you very much. Uh, well, that's a difficult topic to, to present in 12 minutes. I think you did a fantastic job. Very, very interesting. You, you had mentioned, um, I think, early in your presentation that the amide bound formation was thermodynamically unstable. And you, sh you showed the delta G value being like uh, positive 3.5 kilocals. But that's assuming at 25 degrees Celsius, right? So if you increase your temperature, perhaps your delta G will become negative and become more favorable. And so in, in your, after doing your, your research, I was wondering if you have a sense of the environment uh, in which life originated, maybe our hot environments to, to drive the delta G more negative or not, or what are your thoughts? Well, this is a very good question. And I, from my experience, actually I can, say that I read the article about hot spring uh, hypothesis uh, for life. And it was a fantastic idea because the, there was, a, it has been thought that life can, life may occur in the uh, pool-like settings. And um, besides the, besides the, what I talk about here, actually the protocell formation also was uh, was supported by these uh, wet dry cycles and the information transfer information sharing was also uh, very good uh, in this article so that's why i think that um, i'm giving th this talk here because i think also that uh, maybe life may be occurred in these settings too yeah, fantastic. Uh, folks who want to check that out can see uh, Bruce Damer and Dave Deemer have worked on the hot spring hypothesis. It's worth tracking that down and reading more on it. Uh, ben Pauly has his hand up. Ben, go ahead. Hello, thank you. Uh, yeah, that was a really a very interesting presentation, especially towards the end about the tide pools uh, and uh, the ester bonds occurring there. Do you think this idea about 
uh, like ester bonds as a model for the origins of life would have any implications for like biosignatures for astrobiologists to look for? Well, um, well, actually, um, alpha hydroxide. Well, we know that actually alpha hydroxide acids and uh, uh, amino acids can be found in the prebiotic settings, and also they can be found in the uh, meteorite samples too. So maybe um, well, from uh, from my experience uh, by reading this kind of articles, I can say that maybe esters and alpha hydroxy acids can be uh, seen as a biosignatures because maybe there was an alternative chemistry uh, behind uh, behind the emergence of life, and seeing these alpha hydroxy acids in the in the meteorite samples, it tells me why not. I hope that it, it helps. <laughs>